sit back and relax. All right. All right, guys, seeing some of the BTS there. So what if I told you that there are more similarities between Jamaican and Indian dance than you might think? Don't take my word for it. We've got dance anthropologist Prayakshi Agarwal here. She's here to uh, talk to us about those similarities, and she found some of them in a recent research paper that she's done that she's going to tell us more about as well. So good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for being here with us this morning. Thank you. How long you. have you been in Jamaica? Uh, it's been a week now. A week? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, how did you fall in love with Jamaican dance? I'm curious about the link because I know where you're from in Rajasthan, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Dancing is considered a scene. That's right. And so mm -hmm. you were really encouraged to dance. Mm -hmm. well, when did your love of dance begin? Uh, well, um, as you mentioned, I'm from a very, very small village in Rajasthan. And... Uh, uh, when I was six, I realized that I'm a dancer. Uh, we didn't have television in the house so, and no internet, so you know, not YouTube and stuff. Uh, but somehow I knew that I'm a dancer. And uh, then when I left home when I was 16, because the entire family was against my dancing passion and they didn't want me to dance. Uh, so I had to leave home when I was 16. It has been a really difficult journey, but... So you left home and went where? Uh, went to a, a bigger city because I wanted in to... In India? In India. Mm -hmm. Wow. I wanted to study in a good school. I wanted to dance. But in the village, there is just one school, which is a government a regional language school. So there is no English medium. And, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was at 16 that you started to learn English and started to get into dance really deeply? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. So tell me what your journey has been like since that time. Uh, very interesting, very many ups and downs. Uh, initial years were very difficult because the entire world was so new to me. You know, how, I didn't know how to, how to buy a train ticket even, you know. Uh, it has been very interesting, very challenging. But uh, also I met some amazing people. So when I left home, I decided to uh, leave it to the world. That Do you want me to go back to the village, get married, have kids? Uh, you know, you and the world wash says, nope. the world. Exactly. Yeah. So I have decided that I will just put it out there. Do you want me to help in a way? And well, that's I'm um, here. So tell me what you've been doing since, because you um, you call yourself a feminist killjoy, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but you want to use dance as a vehicle to give back. So it's not just even about you, really. It's sure. your, you feel it's your purpose. Absolutely. Um, and so how? Tell me about the social projects you've done first, and then we'll talk about how you landed here. Sure. Uh, uh, so the idea was because, because I knew that how it feels like to be a woman dancer in, born in Rajasthan in India, and not just Rajasthan, many states in India have the same issues. You know, if you are a dancer, you dance in the bars. You know, um, ah. That's how the image is of a dancer. Uh, so when I, when I left home, I decided that if I, one day, if I am, I reach somewhere, I would definitely help more and more women who would like to pursue their career in dance. Uh, and not just in dance, but in any way, if I can empower them, uh, I would definitely help them. So I have done many projects in, in slums. Uh, in India, we have big slums. And, uh, uh, so I have, uh, help them uh, making their career in dance, uh, always encouraging. And I call myself a feminist killjoy. It's a word coined by Sarah Ahmed. Uh, because whenever you, you, you try to negotiate with patriarchy or you try to come forward uh, uh, as a woman, it's always a challenging thing. Especially and everybody if you're tried in a to very suppress patriarchal you. construct. Absolutely. Yeah, so, so you're going against the grain. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Okay, so the research now with Jamaica and, and, and dance hall, and Jamaican music, Indian dance, Jamaican dance, how did that come about? Uh, well, I was very interested always in Caribbean because I feel that's the most suppressed one in the world. I still feel that. And um, I was always curious about the connection of India and Jamaica and also Trinidad and Tobago. Of course. Yes. And uh, so I see many similarities between the culture of India and Jamaica, but also many differences in the dance. So I'm an Indian classical dancer. You know, it's very ruled, sophisticated, very much like mm. this. And when you see these women doing dance hall, 
I found them very strong, very empowering, and you know free. they have exactly Reckless very free. Abandon. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So that made me more curious, and also uh, I'm I'm doing my masters on a European Commission scholarship in in Europe, um, and uh, when when I see the culture in Europe, I feel they are very uptight. Um, so yeah, we don't have that problem here. Sure. I'll um, that out. What moves are you going to show us this morning? What did you want to demonstrate? Uh, in the dance I do is called Bharatanatyam. Okay. And the most important thing is the expression. Oh. Uh, and the, the most important movement. thing in the dance is your facial expression. That's right. Mina Moskan, did that end? Um, show me something, and let's see if it's it's something I can do. I'm sure. Ask you to step over here. I will have to remove my shoes. You will have to remove your shoes. That's right. Okay. Sure. We never do it with, with shoes, shoes on, on? Mm -hmm. okay. because we want to feel the earth. Oh, you have to feel the earth. So that's a part of the connection. Mm -hmm. Love that. All right, let's go. Head over here. Priyakshi. All right, folks, she's getting dressed. She's putting on her... And tell me what you're putting on, Priyakshi. If you can put on the other one over here so we can see. <laughs> tell me about that. What, what is it that you're putting on? We call it gungru. Mm -hmm. These are the ankle bells we put. And it adds on to the music. Okay. It gives our rhythm okay. to dance. Gotcha. So how far along are you in the paper or in the, in the masters? How far along are you in your course of study? It's been a year now. And how much more time do you have? One more year. One more year. That's right. And then what do you do after that? Heading back home? Uh, not really. Maybe I come to University of West Indies for Yay. my PhD. <laughs> Cue music produce. Let's go. Have a seat, Preakshi. Dance anthropologist Preakshi Aga. Let me tell you, this is really a fascinating story. I think one day you should put it in a book. I will definitely. Feminist Killjoy. Feminist Killjoy. Thank you for being here with us this Thank morning. you very and much. For sharing and all the best in your, in your course of study. We're back with more on Smile right after this. Right into the skies after the break. Soon call. <laughs> 